Hi everybody, DJ Sixsmith here, hanging out with Greg Gumbel, hosting all March long. Are you excited for it? Oh yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's a funny thing where you think about it, you start to think about it once college basketball season hits, once football season is over, and all of a sudden it creeps up on you and, and suddenly you go, hey, Sunday is Selection Sunday, and you know you got to be ready for that. But it is, um, as I've always called it, one of the major stops on the sports calendar, no matter where you are. And it's one of those, it's one of those events that's so all-encompassing. There are people in the remote areas of the country that are watching because they've got a school nearby that's of interest, and that's and that's what makes it fun. So you've been covering this for almost 40 years. Is there a moment that you can think early on that you thought to yourself? This is indeed a huge moment in the sports calendar. Oh yeah, um, and yet it was it was way back when um, I did it from I want to say I did it from Indianapolis once on a on a chalkboard, <laughs> and we had gotten the the, the the bracket and filled it in by hand, wow. and you know everything is so electronic right. now and That's different. School, yeah. But it was but but I realized this is something that nobody else is doing, and it was kind of interesting to do. Um, it the, the way we do it now is easier slash harder because it's more up to the minute and uh, the margin for error is not huge nor is it very forgiving um, but 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 again that's what makes it fun to do and you know it's pretty interesting in a world where there isn't a lot of tv that you're just stopping everything for the selection sunday show is absolutely still one of those things so when you think about this year's show, Sean McManus is saying you guys are going to strip it back down, no bells and whistles. What has the preparation been like for that? It's Well, the, the preparation really won't begin. Well, for the, technically speaking, preparation has been in the making for a while now. But for me and for Clark and for Seth, our preparation is weekly in the studio and watching the teams and talking about their chances and their capabilities and, and what they can do, who they've beaten, who they still have on their schedule, and where it might land them in the bracketing. For 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 us to, uh, to, to to knuckle down, that really doesn't begin until Saturday, and we you know we've already we already know a bunch of teams that are already in the tournament. We're going to know a few more as the as the week goes on, and then Saturday and then eventually Sunday, we're sitting there looking and, and trying to prognosticate, and we don't until we do get the brackets. That's another whole adventure. Brackets sometimes come at 5:15, you know, for a six o'clock show, which is nice. Sometimes the brackets don't come until 5.45 or 5.50, and that can give you much time to review your information and see what you have. But, uh, but, uh, but it's all part of it, and everybody else has to deal with that. It's just uh, it's, it's an enjoyable part of the job. All right, Greg, so you're our resident traveling expert here. <laughs> Let's talk about Minneapolis as a Final Four city. We've seen it a couple times. What are the best parts of Minneapolis for college hoops? You know, I wish I could tell you, but college hoops in Minneapolis means that it's cold outside. Right. And I don't venture out you in the cold inside. as well. Oh, God, I wish. I, I want to, like, I was, I was in Minneapolis. Uh, I hosted the Super Bowl there for CBS in the uh, early 90s. And I went everywhere underground. I mean, they, they have enough foresight for people to travel yeah. one, from one place to another underground. I go, why would anybody want to go outside and bother with that? Um, it, it's, someone said the other day that last year, on the day that the Final Four is happening, uh, it was nine degrees, and you go, well, yeah, that's a good reason not to go outside. <laughs> you know, I'd rather be indoors. Thank you very much. All right, there you have it, Greg Gumble. Thank you so much.